Welcome back. You're tuned into the My Cool Inventions Network. I'm Akos, the solutionist. Andrew Jank, your amazing musician and great product developing guy <laughs> right here next to me. Actually, today this is the part, I love this day because we always do occasionally where we have a section called Tony's, what is it called? Tony's Serious Six Question. Questions. All right, now, if you don't know Tony, he's in the control room. You guys never see him because the cameras are pointed this way. But if the cameras are, one day we have to get our camera pointed at those guys. Because there's a big screen here, a big window. And behind the window, there's a bunch of people producing the show. We've got Al in there and Tony in there and half a dozen assistants. I don't know what they got going on over there. But Tony is running the audio board, I think. And he types the stuff in there. And the guys are looking for their assistants. Actually, there's only two of them. So so let's hear from Tony. He's uh, one of our producers back there. Tony, what's your serious question? Why would you want to look at us? <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious question. Actually, this guy, you know, you got an old guy in there and some hipster guy in there. You know, of course, you guys you are guys, cool you guys looking. Got, you got you, face for radio. You got face for radio. It's perfect for this. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, Tony, what is your serious question? All right. But seriously, my serious question is, um, is there a new mousetrap? And w- what I mean by that is, huh? uh, here's a good example of it on television like they're remaking Magnum PI and the guy they're doesn't what? even have a mustache Magnum PI they're making Magnum PI and the guy doesn't have a mustache Uh-oh. no he's got this little goatee thing it's not Tom Selleck on, but it's not Tom Selleck does he have an office where the car goes right inside the office uh, I'm not sure. I didn't really see that. Is he like driving a Volkswagen something? What, 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 what is it? Are he supposed to be driving a hot car and having all the hot chicks chasing him? No? Bosley's a hot chick. Huh. What? Okay. So, so I guess your question is, so your question is, um, is there a new mousetrap? Like, is there a new idea? Is that what you're saying? Basically, yeah. All right. So because everybody's just remaking the old idea. Yeah. All right. So an invention, you're asking uh, all inventions are some remade old invention. Basically, are we? And I mean, that's kind of technology-wise. Are, are is there really a new invention, or is invention just coming down to uh, revamping what we already have? I'm gonna go in there and slap you, seriously, <laughs> dude. So, okay, there's something called the United States Trademark and Patent Office (USPTO), the Patent and Trademark Office. You know those guys, right? Okay. So those guys specialize in making sure. That is a new mousetrap. <laughs> so the answer to your question, okay. and we're going to talk about this. Actually, it's a pretty cool question. So the answer to your question, fundamentally, yes, of course, there's always a new mousetrap. Yeah. That's where you get your patent from. That's the mousetrap patent. Because if the U.S., the, the, the trademark and the, the, the patent office looks at your invention and they determine that it's been done before, you don't get the patent. Right, so it has to be completely not done before, and they go research it. They go look at artwork. Uh, by the way, the word artwork, I, I I got confused in that too. So when you do a patent, Andrew, you got to yeah. submit all this paperwork and drawings. Okay. And the loose word for it, the artwork is the descriptions and the drawings. You have to describe your invention in super detail with these super drawings. And I know you're quite okay. artistic. You probably be a pretty good patent drawer on okay. there. And they label all these drawings. If you go to the U- USPTO.gov, USP pto.gov you can see examples of patents and they don't they don't grant a patent unless it's a new mousetrap right so that's that's the answer to tony's question however you can improve an old invention. <laughs> so, okay, so that's why. Yeah, so you can improve an old invention if you distinguishly improve the old invention. I'll give you an example. I have one that got a little bit of controversy. I mean, we had a little bit of a controversy uh, on it because I have a collapsible ottoman. Okay, um, a collapsible ottoman is it's a, it's a it's a box that collapses into its lid, and we sell it as an ottoman. So I saw a collapsible storage box, but it didn't have. Lead on it, didn't have padding on it, right? right? It was just a box, a cube that collapsed. And I said, well, you know, because we came from the furniture business, the piano business, right? Right. So we said, hey, you know what? If you put a little uh, padding on that thing, and you put a little uh, maybe fake leather, or you put some buttons and you know, sew yep. it up and maybe make nice. it, then it got into suede and velvet and leopard. And, <laughs> and, and you know, now we're making it in camo and, and then we're making it in different sizes. We have this whole line of collapsible storage ottomans called sit and store. If you go to evine.com and type in my name, Acos, you'll see all the sit and store ottomans up there. They sell like hotcakes. Okay. So what happened is along came a guy who had another collapsible box. In fact, it was a stepping stool, not even an ottoman, who came to me and said, hey, you're stepping on my patent. I mean, you're copying me. And the truth is no, because the patent office gave us a distinctive patent 
right? And his patent was there too, yeah. but it was distinct enough where the patent office says, yeah, you know what, that's distinct enough. We'll grant that factory a patent. And that factory, our factory, was granted the patent. In fact, the original patent was also from our factory. But <laughs> they licensed it to some guy, but the guy got all offended that we had improved the patent. Of course we improved it. It was not a box. It was not a stepping stool. It became a padded luxury furniture item, and we got the patent. And of course we changed it. He had a zipper mechanism. We had a, a folding mechanism. And generally speaking, the, I'm going to make a random statement. The patents have to be 15% better or 15% different yeah. before the patent office will take a look at it. Okay? okay. So you get that, Tony. So you can actually, as long as that new Magnum PI show is better than no, the old Magnum no PI show. Mustache, but goatee. The, so maybe that's why they didn't copy the mustache, the right? <laughs> they didn't have a Tom Selleck lookalike. I don't even know what the show is. I used to love Magnum PI. Yeah. I used to watch that in the afternoons. Yeah, I mean, I, I went, and Tom Selleck is still cool, by the way. He's on your favorite show, Blue Bloods. My favorite show, Blue Bloods. He's still cool. He's still he still <laughs> rules. And he's still rocking a stash. He's still rocking the stash. How old is that guy? He's got to be 70 years old now, right? But he's still a cool guy. In fact, I know we grew up, Andrew and I grew up in Burlington, Hamilton, area. All right. All right. And I know, uh, I know, I don't know if you knew, but Tom Selleck had a house on Lakeshore right. in Oakville. Right. Uh, he was shooting movies there. Oh, the, the baby movies. What were those baby movies? Uh, three Men and a Baby or what, yeah, that's what a, was it called? You know, the three guys ended up with a baby at the front door. That's right. Well, they were shooting that in Toronto and he loved the area so much he bought a house on Lake Ontario in Oakville, Ontario. And we had a piano store in Oakville, right. Ontario. And of course, Tom Selleck once in a while was spotted walking down the coffee shops downtown right. Oakville. So big, tall, guy, good, you know, handsome dude, you know, he, was a, he had it all together, he was driving sports cars and stuff, yeah. but the fact that they knocked off his show, <laughs> what is some guy with a goatee, what'd you say, is he tiny, puny, is he strong, big, what? He's he's not he's not the size of Tom Selleck no. from what I saw. All right, no. nonsense All right. on there. So they knocked off that Hawaii Five O show too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. On there. but I like the new Hawaii Five O show. I think those guys it's are quite new cool. New and improved. New and improved. There's that, that <laughs> there's that a great looking uh, team there. They've got uh, uh, you know the, the 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 Asian chick in there. Really really, really great, smart, hot. You know, they take one do. She fights better than the boys do. You know that guy, the big guy. I love the the the, uh, the big guy with the shrimp truck. I love that. They didn't have that on the original show. Oh, okay. So I think the new Hawaii Five O show is better than the old Hawaii Five O show, you know? I think that was kind of good. So so can you make a better mouse trap? Yes. You can actually invent a new mouse trap. Okay, that's when the patent office gives you the patent. That's a new mousetrap. Or you can take an old mousetrap and improve it, and that becomes a new patent. That's a new mousetrap, all right? So Lindsay Lynch, I think, I think she goes by different names. It's artist L&L now uh, okay. up there. She goes, morphing <laughs> products. Now we are morphing products together. Isn't an everything a mixture of everything? Isn't everything a mixture of everything? Well, well, well if you look at it sort of fundamentally, there's only like 110 elements of the world. You know, right. everything's made up of hydrogen, those elements. Helium, you know? yeah. Remember those? Boron, hydrogen, carbon, helium. nitrogen, oxygen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, how far did you get? <laughs> hydrogen, helium, lithium, <laughs> boron. I don't know number five. I'm lost really? now. Uh, yeah, carbon, 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 carbon nitrogen. I used to know them till about a hundred, yeah. but not anymore. That's my uh, brain gone too much. Too, too much. Too much. Too much red wine at night. I can't remember <laughs> all the elements. But everything is Lindsay. So maybe everything is a mixture of everything when you think about it. However, the patent office enforces. What's right and what's wrong. Now, it's, what happens sometimes? People knock things off too. Right. right. Well, I was just going to say about in in my business where the musicians and stuff like guitars, where you have a guitar manufacturer like say Les Paul or, or rather Gibson who makes a Les Paul style of a guitar, then they also have to contend with people knocking them. So what is off. a Les style? What's what is a Les style? Guitar? Les Paul's style of guitar is like a is a round bass on right. a, on it's just anybody you, t you tell them, any musician they'll know exactly what that is. So it's a shape. It's the shape of the guitar. So, okay. So they, they can actually just change, for example, the headstock of the guitar. It's got a distinct headstock on a Gibson. So if you change that, manipulate a little bit, and you manipulate the horns on the ends, it's all of a sudden a different guitar. So and it gets away. Then you can get away with actually reproducing it. But if you actually make it exactly like it's a guitar, it's a guitar, right? Right. But these people get really touchy on patents and stuff because you can't. Then you can't sell it like a Les Paul guitar. You have to say LS style of guitar. 
I that see. kind of thing. So I that's see. how they get around. It was, it's interesting to get into that. So music, all, basically, a lot of musical instruments are also inventions. Andrew Andrew has enlightened us with all kinds of inventions from the music side. The other side I want to talk to you about, uh, Tony, something we don't talk about here. Have you ever noticed that some very cool inventions like Coca-Cola, KFC Chicken, those inventions don't get patented? Do you know why? Because in order to patent Coca-Cola, they would have to publish the recipe. <laughs> and once you have the recipe, yep. you only have to change it 15%, and then you can publish, you can patent your own recipe, and it would be very similar to Coca-Cola. So that's why some mixtures, chemical formulas, for example, stains are out, not patented, I get protected with the trademark, okay? Laundry sheets, while well, the delivery mechanism's patented, but I'll never publish the formula in the sheets because that's a pretty, pretty, pretty great formula and hard to reproduce because it's got a real big impact punch with a little bit of liquid. So sometimes when it comes to uh, chemicals and drinks and mixtures, yeah. we don't patent it, I right? Can imagine. It's just so there's a good question for you. Is there another mousetrap like that for an unpatented item? Well, I guess, yes, there is, because along came Pepsi-Cola, or I think Coca-Cola came after Pepsi-Cola. I'm not yeah, sure right. uh, how that how that developed. I'm not sure how the Cola Wars started. But, uh, you know, that happens. Yeah. Sprite, Sprite, 7-Up. Is 7-Up a U.S. thing, or is it just a Canadian thing? Tony, is it a U.S. thing? No, 7-Up uh, U.S. as well. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Do you understand what a Kit Kat bar is? Yes. Do you understand what an Aero, no, he Aero chocolate what, he bar is? He doesn't know what a coffee crisp is. Do you know what a coffee crisp is? Um, it's kind of like a, a mix between a Kit Kat, like a Reese's break. Oh my gosh, you're so far know. off. Yeah. Seriously, I don't know what that is. You got to go to Canada to get real chocolate bars on there. Hey, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, what's your favorite chocolate bar? I want to hear it on the on the post there. And, do you, and does anybody know what a Kit Kat bar is? If you go to England, yeah, go to Canada. Course, one no. of the best have, bars have ever there. Too. Yeah, do they have them here? Of course, they're everywhere here. No, even in Dubai, there's some. What? Yeah, and coffee crisps. I'm I hope coffee crisp. Oh, Kit Kat. You're right. Coffee crisp. You know what a coffee crisp bar is? <laughs> well, that's uh, the taste of a serious question.